Issue one is going to be voted on in, I think, 11 days, all right? And the opponents of issue one say, well, he's innocent until proven guilty and all this other bull****. Um, so under their theory, you can't affect an arrest. How do you arrest anybody if he's not been found guilty by a judge or a jury under their theory? There are provisions in law that we can hold dangerous people. The law was that way for 200 years. In January, an activist Supreme Court changed the law unilaterally. Marion O'Connor, three Democrats, changed the law. So we put a constitutional amendment on the ballot to stop it, to stop this nonsense. When I talk to groups around the state and I say, when judges said bail, according to the Supreme Court, you can't consider the safety of the community. And people can't believe it. And look, there is a war going on out there, and it's not just on the streets. It's in the courtrooms. And the, the ideology of some of our judges, that they continue to let violent people out, we've got... We've got a juvenile judge who has a convicted rapist in front of her who believes high school is more important than delivering justice to this victim who is forcibly anally raped, this 11-year-old boy. And his family's terrified. I don't know when it happened, but there was a shift in criminal justice from the victims to the defendants. Now we feel sorry for the defendants. Oh, he, you know, he came from a broken home. And you know what? Lots of people do. They don't do this kind of crap. What's solid about the, that constitutional amendment, if you read the ballot language, is that the judges shall. Because right now we have judges that use the DeBose decision to shield themselves from something stupid. Like, oh, I'm, I, all I can ask is what he can afford. That's all I can do. And again, this myth that we have first-time nonviolent offenders in our jail. Two years ago, P.G. Sittenfeld, Jeff Pastor, Tamara, whatever her name is, and all these city council people stood up and said, we need bail reform. All these people on first-time marijuana charges are in jail and all this other nonsense. And I said to them two years ago, I've been saying it for two years. Tell me who is in jail that shouldn't be there. Tell me their name. Give me a name. We hear all this anecdotal nonsense. Tell me the name of the person in jail. Because if that person's in jail, if you have a nonviolent first-time offender in our jail, I'll get them out. I'll do it myself. I'll go to the judge and say, this is nonsense. Okay, we need violent people in here. We have over 130 people right now in our justice system on some type of homicide charge. Last year, we had 19 juveniles charged with murder. We are in a war. Okay? And to continue to coddle and protect defendants like this is nonsensical. It's almost disrespectful to real gangs to call these people gangs. They're loosely affiliated bunch of thugs that are killing each other. The problem is, to be perfectly frank, they're killing innocent people, okay? They're not just killing each other. You talk to people, oh, they're just killing each other. No, they're killing innocent people too. People taking their kids to school, they can't even walk outside in their neighborhoods anymore. Where's the outrage for this? And I'll say one more thing, and I hate to sound bipartisan, but I, it's going to come out that way, but I'm going to say it anyway. When we went to the legislature and asked the House and the Senate, we had to have three-fifths majority to get this on the ballot this fall. We need three-fifths. Now, just as a general rule, what areas of the state of Ohio do you think the Democrats represent? Cleveland, Cincinnati. The urban areas that are having these high crime rates who are victimized by people like this. And guess what? Every single Democrat who voted voted no. Why? What is, how do you go back to your constituents and say, you know what, I don't think we should consider the safety of your child walking to the school bus tomorrow. I don't think that should be a factor when we set bail. Why is it that you're, uh, why did you bring the media to this, these particular homicides? Uh, we have a lot of homicides. You don't hold a press conference for all of them. Why these? 
I thought it was necessary. First of all, the video of this little boy being tortured so upset me that that's going on. Um, I thought they were very good examples, number one, of what we're dealing with every day. Number two, the last two guys, the, the second indictment I described, how horrendous their records are. And that for a judge to believe that an ankle bracelet's going to keep them under control is – it's not based on any fact. Let's say that. Let me ask, critics <laughs> would say that you're bringing this up two weeks before the election in order to some way affect that particular uh, constitutional amendment that you – I hope it does. I really do. I hope that people pay attention to stuff. I hope people pay attention to who they elect as judge. I really do. We got lawyers in this town spending $300,000 trying to elect people as a judge in our community that have no business being a judge in our community. None. No experience. Just, oh. Uh, but that's the system we have. It's electoral. You know, if he wants to elect people that aren't qualified to be judged, go for it, pal. I just hope voters pay attention this year because we are still dealing with two years ago. We lost 173 years of judicial experience. They had really nice jingles, vote for da ba 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 whatever they sing and dance and whatever they do. But that ain't the right judge. If you see a commercial with a jingle for your judge, I'd pretty much say don't vote for him. I couldn't even imagine. If we went to the judge on every case like that, I mean, we would be there. You saw how long the one case took. I mean, it, look, when we have a – when you, you're arraigned and you've been in room A before, you're in room A, the prosecutor reads what happened. Okay, this guy shot somebody. He – um, the police witnessed it. It's on video. He confessed. Okay, well, there's pretty good indication he's probably guilty. And he's probably dangerous, so we're going to hold him. I don't think that's unreasonable. Now, I know he's not guilty until proven guilty, you know, that nonsense. We're one piece of it, you know, the prosecutors. Are. The police are doing a great job. I humbly believe our office is doing a really good job of identifying violent people. But... If the judge doesn't do anything about it, there's nothing we can do. That third link is critical. I don't know this guy's background who was pointing a gun at the kid's head, making him dance, and the kid thought he was going to die, clearly. Um, but I got to believe that nobody's been sitting on this kid for the last 16 years to make him go to school, to make him follow the rules, to make him do that. That's, that kid's out of control. He's violent, and he's very dangerous. And unfortunately, people don't get it. Unfortunately, people usually don't get it until it affects them directly. You know, then you have marches. Don't shoot my kid. Don't, you know, this is, it's horrible, you, you know. Um, then people get it. But until then, everybody's like, well, you know, it's somebody else. It'll never happen to my family. It does. The way it, the system is in Ohio... You have to elect judges that deal with violent criminals the way that you want them dealt with. Not just me, but, I mean, if you want to feel safe, you can't elect judges that don't bind anybody over unless they have to. So, um, since you brought up Blake Mason, um, and that Was that who I was talking about? That is who you were talking okay. about. Okay. Um, since you brought him up, um, mm -hmm. Judge Winkler is running for a seat Mm -hmm. on the appellate court. Correct. That it's not his own seat. Correct. Blake Maislin would say it's because he wants a Republican governor to appoint that open seat that he's going to be vacating. Blake is a genius, isn't he? That's exactly what they're doing. They want conservative judges in the Court of Appeals. They're trying to do anything they can to get conservatives in the Court of Appeals. But is and that, that gamesmanship okay? It, it happens everywhere. Musical chairs, I've heard that my entire career. 
oh, he's retiring as a clerk. He's going to be the clerk. And then Art Nay retired. Now he's the prosecutor. It's all musical chairs. That's the system we got, okay? That's the system we got. And I don't blame Judge Winkler. I don't blame whoever made the call. I didn't make the call. Whoever made the call to get more conservatives, people that aren't progressives on the Court of Appeals, I would support 100%. And I'm not, I wouldn't run from it. If I was the chairman of the party, I'd say, you're damn right. I'm trying to get conservatives on this bench. It's becoming more and more difficult in Hamilton County to do that. So we are trying to get people who have addiction problems, who have problems that can be fixed out of the system. But when you deal with violent criminals, and I mean people that do stuff like this, murder three people, torture little kids with guns like this, they need to go away forever. They're not savable. He's done. He's done in my mind. I mean, I can only be prosecuted two more years. As long as I'm here, he's done. And I'm going to do everything I can to do that to violent people. And maybe the message will get out. Maybe it won't. But I'll tell you this. That guy is not going to kill somebody else unless he kills somebody in prison, whatever. But he ain't going to kill anybody else in Cincinnati. He's gone. Thanks, everybody.